bringing the weird fiction aspect of this trailer along with a more than winking nod mm. to a cosmic horror author. But enough teasing. This is Once Human. All right. Then present the full look of the game. All right. This is a Net Easy Games live stream on IGN. It's about all about it's all about weird survival horror games. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna react to it, and I hope you all enjoy the video. And if you did, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And let's watch this uh, event together. All right, let's go. Okay, we got here. Oh my god. So it does not represent the final look of the game. Yeah, they always put they always put the small text like either in this like in the small uh, font form in the center or in the corner. So you gotta make sure to look out for it. So this is not the final look, but we're getting like a sneak peek. Of what what this gamer is about? Oof! It is well. Uh, in the description, it did say about weird survival horror games. Let's see, are we getting the worst side? Hmm, let's see. Once a uh, human. Hmm. Well, it wasn't the final look, but just we got a sneak peek. Let's see what the game's all, all about later. Is Victoria Pink soon. Son, senior game designer over at NetEase Games. Welcome. Hi, I'm Victoria. I'm a developer from the Once Human team. I'm in charge of putting together the big world of the game, designing levels and environments, as well as developing non player characters and their background stories. Once Human is a new weird survival game. But what is New Weird? Well, New Weird is a uh, mm. literary and film genre that emerged in the tw mid 20th century. And it features unexplainable, incomprehensible horror, which is related to cosmic horror, some urban myth, and sci fi stories. Uh, a good living sample of this genre could be the SCP Foundation database that is quite popular these days online. And we did to some extent oh, get inspired uh. by them. I love SCP, so this already sounds amazing, but what's unique about Once Human and what separates it from other survival games? Once Human features a post-apocalyptic world where humanity has fallen after the havoc of Stardust. We have players named Beyonders in the game, and they have to face the threats of the unknown horror. In our game, survival is of highest priority to the players. Always. Besides collecting resources and building their own shelters for survival, Players have to craft and right, for survival and equipment as always every uh horror video against both I mean, I mean a horror, horror and game fellow human enemies. Just survive, don't die. We have bosses named the great ones in our game. They are cunning, unfathomable, and devious in their behavior and appearance. Players need to compete with each other as well, both individually and united in groups named hives. They have to fight for ownership of strongholds or to loot resources in the dangerous areas we call impasse. These features all make our game, our once human, stand out from other survival games. Now, the new trailer opens with a line from H.P. Lovecraft. What influence did you draw from his work? Well, our team loves Mr. Lovecraft, especially in his unique way of picturing those eerie horror stories. And to some extent, we are inspired by his horror stories, and we are trying to build our own world of unique horror and mystery. We would like to convey to the players the essence of this world after the outburst of Stardust Havoc. This unknown microcreature just suddenly spread all over the world and contaminated everything. And we have monsters emerge and invade the world, and there our players, Beyonders, stands as a hero confronting all of this ever-changing and still unknown disaster. And players, the Beyonders, have to evolve in their physical status and their technology to make more advanced equipments to fight back. 
What was your inspiration for designing the aberrant monsters known as the Great Ones? So the Great Ones in our game are powerful creatures coming from outside of the dimension where human lives in. They permeate the boundaries between dimensions and invaded the human world. So we looked back to Cthulhu concepts and the SCP uh, project concepts for some inspirations when we designed these monsters, and we condensed the figures of the Great Ones from those. Well, they should look like something beyond human comprehension, daunting yet beautiful in a weird way. They are powerful as they look, and they are the most exciting challenges we have prepared for our players to experience. What about the game map? What inspired your team to design those fascinating cities and structures? Well, our game map is, is huge. So uh, basically, the story. How huge? Are we talking about Grand Theft Auto V huge, Red Dead Redemption? And on the island, there are generally four different areas. Uh, for example, there is the Blackfell region, which is in the east uh, on that island, and it features marshes, moors, and deserts. And you can the map huge, like sandstorm weather compared to, to say Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And other um, areas all feature its own geological structures and its unique uh, landscapes. For example, Arkham Mountains in the north is cold and snowy and dangerous, and it's decorated with uh, a lot of plane crash sites. And in the west, there are the Great Plains, and um, it looks friendly there, but it actually has the largest complicated underground subway tunnel systems. So you can actually explore into those dangerous tunnels and caves hidden there. Uh, meeting a lot of enemies. Now, this map is huge. What can players do in this massive map? Well, the map is big, and what you can do in it is kind of countless. You can do a lot of things. I'll get to the final look at the, of the whole game, because we, what, we what, 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 we, what we saw what's in the final look, there's like a sneak peek. I want to see how this map, how big this map is, as I say. We'll see. You can put as many structures as it's limited uh, in your uh, shelter and to build your shelter you have to collect resources uh, first there are over a hundred types of different resources that you can collect in our game and some of them are natural resources like logs stones uh, ores and water and animal products like hide and raw meat and stuff like those and you can also loot the human uh, strongholds to find scraps like industry products and you can decompose them into useful materials to craft items. Uh, in terms of survival shelter building, you can build structures and you can actually decorate your home using like green plants and clocks and furnitures and so many different things. Oh, I love decoration, so I'm definitely gonna spend hours in that part of the game, but do you have any tips on how players can survive in the wilderness? Uh, well, first of all, you have to pay attention to your physical functions. Like, you have to ensure that you stay hydrated, you stay stomach-filled, and you're sane enough to survive. If you dump yourself too long in the polluted water, you probably get diseases and delusions, and you have to find medicines to cure those. Uh, so craft and use various items, like consumable items, to ensure that your physical status is always in the healthy range. It's very important in terms of survival. And also you have to learn to improve your equipment and weapons. Uh, you can add attributes and potential skills to your weapons. You can craft like gun perks and from blueprints, you can get like rare and higher quality weapons. So you have to explore the big world to find these gun perks and and blueprints. Uh, also, you probably need to form alliances with other players, and working with allies can boost the chance of defeating the Great Ones. And also, uh, you form groups like Hive, and you can actually cooperate with your uh, fellow Hive members to challenge other players. And how do PvE Great One invasions work? Can they be soloed, or do they need teamwork? Uh, well, the Great One invasions can be encountered in different level areas of the map. And uh, basically, in one level area, there will be one to two Great Ones that you can find. And uh, one each, each Great Ones will have basically four different difficulty levels, and you can unlock the higher level after you finish the previous one. So higher level Great Ones will definitely be more, uh, you know, destructive and cause uh, a lot more damage to you. Uh, if you are confident enough in your battle moves, in your combat skills, and in your equipment and weapons, you can solo the Great Ones alone. 
uh, but generally we recommend that two to four players team up and challenge them. Since the Great One Invasion is such a difficult uh, PvE challenge, we also prepared generous rewards for every player who successfully contained a beast in their dimension. Now, what other PvE content is in the game? Uh, actually, besides the Great One Invasion we just talked about, we have the Raid Dungeons and we have um, you know, various world exploration uh, missions. Uh, talking about the Raid Dungeons, well, they are at various locations around the world and they feature prolonged exploration uh, in the dungeon. Basically, there will be two to three bosses in one dungeon and uh, in each stage there will be one boss. And uh, the battles in the dungeons are more intense and it features a lot of battle mechanisms that you have to deal with. So uh, we recommend that players team up, like maybe like four players form a team to challenge these dungeons. Uh, besides intense battles, you can also loot the chest in the dungeons between battles, and you may find interactive pieces of paper, interactive computer terminals that you can actually get a lot of story information from them. These story slices sometimes provide a lot of important clues that will guide you to uh, better perform your world exploration. Besides PvE, we know that there's also PvP. How does that work? Uh, in terms of PvP, we basically have two main modes of PvP, and uh, one is called Stronghold Conquest. In terms to join this, you have to first form groups called Hive. Hive is a group that can accommodate 30 to 100 people each, and Hives can occupy and compete for resource areas around in the big world. Uh, different hives can definitely attack each other, so when one hive declares war on another, the system will automatically pick two leaders, one in each hive, and they have to recruit their teams of attackers and defenders. Then the attacker's team need to gain dominance over the defender's beacon area in a limited time, so as to have control over that resource area. And the defender team have to build defending constructions in the resource area and guard and stand their ground. There is also free PvP in the impasse zone. So uh, indeed, the impasse zone is a uh, PvE VP exploration area. So uh, players team up and different teams just enter the impasse zone at the same time. You have to deal with non-player enemies like aberrant monsters or a set of soldiers. And at the same time, you have to be aware of sneak attacks by other players because everyone is competing for the rare resource called source in that area. And if you um, defeat another player and loot his body, you will get a large amount of swords. And what rewards are there for players who participate in PvP? In Stronghold Conquest, you can get Gun Perks, Gun Blueprints, you can get the Energy Link and Stardust Cortex, which is all uh, possible rewards for players who participated in a Stronghold Conquest between Hives. And these are all valuable resources that you can use to strengthen your build and use to craft uh, powerful weapons. In the impasse, players can farm the resource named Source, which can be converted to Stardust Cortex. And if you use some Stardust Cortex when you craft your weapons and equipments, they will add random perks to your weapons and equipments. And also you can use them as money to exchange for other items in the non-player character's inventory stores. It is located in a lot of human strongholds. Now, what kind of firearms and weapons are available in the game? Can they only be crafted or can you find them out in the world? Uh, well, firearms are the most important combat weapons uh, in our game. In terms of types of firearms, we have so many. We have pistols, we have assault rifles, we so have many guns, we have shotguns, yeah, hell we have yeah. rifles, and we have submachine guns. In total, there are over 70 different types of firearms, and each firearm has its own shooting, feel, and characteristics, exactly as it is in this reality. These firearms... Well, yeah, all, all look, they all, they all look uh, pretty cool, all the guns. But those are kind of basic weapons. If you want to get like powerful and more advanced firearms, you have to craft them from blueprints. The key resources that can be obtained by purchasing, upgrading personal territory, and you can complete tasks to get rewards of those blueprints, and you can find some scraps of the blueprints in your world exploration. Uh, the rarer the blueprint, the higher the quality of weapons you can craft. 
What sort of customization options are there for the weapons? Mm, well, there are basically six human non non player character sections in the game. Oh, we need them and customs. We also divide our guns into six different gun families, which is associated with these human factions. And they kind of share a lineage of development uh, in skills and attributes. And uh, players can also modify your guns, uh, like improve the stability of the firearm. You can probably optimize the recoil, enlarge the magazine capacity by adding accessories to the guns. And these accessories, you can also loot them from strongholds or craft them based on accessory blueprints. Also, firearms have another important attribute called gun perks. Firearms with, you know, different rarities have different numbers and different levels of gun perks it can be assembled to it. By assembling these gun perks, uh, you can give your weapon a lot of passive skills like uh, chain damage, damage boost, freezing, ignition, automatic reload, and so on. So combining these gun perks with your passive skills and with your player's active skills, you can actually you know, form countless, like numerous views, and this will definitely enrich your combat, combat experience. Now, is there anything you'd like to leave players with before they explore Once Human? Well, um, I very much hope that Once Human will be ready for players as soon as possible in the future. And also as a designer of Once Human, I am looking forward to see more and more survival game lovers join us, start their journey in Nowcut, and to experience exciting combats and explore the fascinating world with us. Uh, and there's a final advice for everyone who is trying to uh, start their journey in Nowcut. Be sure to collect enough copper ores in the Sirius Island area as much as possible. You won't regret getting them. Victoria, thank you so much for joining me. I've got to go prep for a battle against some aberrant ones, but in the meantime, here to discuss the creature designs and cosmic horror slash weird fiction roots of Once Human is IGN's Brian Altano and Max Scovel. Weird fiction is a subgenre of supernatural and horror fiction that dates back to the 19th century and is still enjoyed to this very day. That's right, authors like Robert W. Chambers and H.P. Lovecraft breathe life into the subgenre with the King in Yellow and the entirety of the Cthulhu mythos, respectively. And to this day, weird fiction's influence echoes throughout time and can even be found in contemporary media like Stranger Things. Yep, so to celebrate all things weird fiction, we thought we would take a look at some of the aberrant monsters and rather strange environments in Once Human. So let's start by taking a look at some of Once Human's boss monsters! Boss Monsters! Boss Monsters! All right, first up we've got the tree ant who clearly has some tree ant-like characteristics but is also very clearly, you know, not not of this world. Uh, you know, definitely, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is more of the kind of demon tree from Evil Dead than it is like friendly old tree beard from Lord of the Rings. This is a very scary- A uh, small waist, yeah, big brawly, kind of, uh, uh, made tree upper body. For me, and uh, this creature will continue to invite that legacy of horror into my brain when trees do stuff other than be trees and take forms that become human like don't like it it's not scary a fan. and gross i think i have a face also he's got this like oh, i think little okay uh, i see it. i see it right there hanging off the top just, of his head. just barely he's got that weird little goatee thing going on with this tree stuff and then he's got four eyes yeah i, I don't care four eyes what? or a person i don't like that i don't like that little facial hair that little goatee eyes. i don't think anyone can pull that off all right, here we got some Rabazex, who's Rabazex. really got some, uh, some demo dog to him. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely getting some kind of lanternfish vibes, too, you know? like But yeah. instead of having, like, a little tiny, you know, little light thing to attract people, he's got this just energy blast of whatever... Some you know, power that is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, still he's got those little, uh, those little, you know, dangly whiskers there and that giant, horrifying mandible. Yeah, plus these, uh, you know, like, weird back claws he's got in his hands and feet. He's got this kind of, like, brolic look to his legs. He's definitely pretty jacked there. And he's got these gross, open, wound mouth things that look like they have, might have stitches on them. I love I them. can't I tell if those beautiful. are stitches or, or teeth. All right. Love this one right here. This is a beautiful, beautiful beast. Um, I don't really know what the plan is in terms of this creature living its day to day. Does he got a mini gun on his arm? Just killing. Killing seems to be the primary objective here. Uh, we've got this huge claw and a huge mini gun, which is great. Just a good thing to have on your arm. I don't know if he 
put that there himself. Go for it. Hack and slash and shoot him up. Combine into one. Like kind of got grafted. Or if, you know, this is just a horrible experiment and he wants no part of it. So he's just going to do the best he can and kill everyone. Oh, all right. We love it. We love it. I don't. No, thank you. This is an Araxium, and clearly there are some uh, spider influences, thus the Iraq, and also thus the me being deeply uncomfortable because I don't like those things with the eight legs. No, thank you. Yeah, this is a, you know, like this is a, a basically a big collective of, of various phobias here. You've got the tryptophobia thing, which is like the, the weird circles in the back. Um, I have a fear of um, w women women's hair in the shower drain. Because I've cleared, cleared that out every now and then. What the so, fuck? And so this one's got like it's got a full on oh like, human head, I believe, with hair. Uh, it's it's got this big pussy butt full of green circles that are like say that disgusting. Oh, what they're what are you? They're come on. What is that? That's disgusting. And then you've got that little elephant trunk Ov nose. It? I think thing. it's called like an ovipositor. Yeah, it's a, it's like what the queen alien has. It's the big egg sac. Bloop, yes. Bloop, bloop. Um, yeah. Can we look at Can we look at something else, please? Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. Now we're getting a look at some environments. Uh, this one's really cool. This is a uh, dilapidated gas station um, that has been overrun by weird floating creature people. They're they're human esque for sure, but they've got some very not so human elements to them, such as uh, the elongated limbs and weird dangly fingers um some of them are even missing body parts and they're all going up to the heavens helping them to float because you can get around like a rapture yeah this is giving me some going all the way up things vibes for sure like you definitely have more of a sense of this being sort of small town america or wherever this is like where are we eh, seems pretty safe to assume this is this is this is earth and it's uh a place where there used to be gas stations but now they things have gone somewhat literally sideways mm-hmm Oh my. Oh boy. Okay, so right off the bat, Blood Lake or Pus or some sort of Blood Ocean. horrible, toxic, weird, viscous, disgusting liquid that has covered the earth during a rainstorm. And uh, we've got flying tentacle octopus monsters in the sky. Mm -hmm. And then people in, in just mucking around down there uh, looking for something. I don't know. Yeah, I think they might be trying to for, looking for a way out, or th what is that? Like a golden corral? There's a sign up there. It looks like they're trying to go get a bite. But uh, yeah, no, this is this is very much quite literally drenched in ichor, which is yeah. one of the most the one of the tenets of like Lovecraftian stuff. Is really it's a fancy you know fancy way of saying slime. Uh, and yeah. then over on the on the right here, you've got like there's there's stuff growing. There's like yeah. there's like sort of sort of plants seems like the wrong word. But it's giving me again with the Lovecraft kind of color out of space. Like it's this something came from far away, and now it's it's proving to be quite an invasive species of some sort. It's just growing every which way. There's like little tendrils and things. It looks like there's kind of spores around the, the light up there, uh, and you know, lightning. Why not? Weird fiction will continue to spread its influence on all of pop culture for eons to come. So check it out yourself when Once Human releases on PC sometime soon. For everything monsters, you're already in the right place. IGN. Can't spell monsters without IGN. It's not even remotely true, but you can try. <laughs> well, that about wraps things up for this presentation. Once Human is releasing on PC with a release date coming soon. And just because the stream's over doesn't mean the party's done. Tomorrow, we're covering the Xbox Bethesda Showcase and the yeah. PC Gaming Show. And for more on all things gaming, stay tuned to IGN.com. All right, I think that wraps it up. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.